In this video, I'll show you how to make a strong vacuum pump using inexpensive materials. There are many applications that use vacuum technologies, including degassing, semiconductor fabrication, medicine, and in a host of high-tech fields. For demonstration purposes and for a host of simple experiments, I will show you how to make an inexpensive vacuum using only syringes, one-way valves, and pneumatic fittings. Before describing the experiment, we need a good understanding of one-way or check valves. A check valve allows air or fluid to move one direction through a valve, but not the other. Here's a simplified animation of how a check valve works. Before we do any pumping, the pressure on both sides of the valve is the same. Also, a small mechanical force causes a mechanical stopper to seal airflow. Adding the mechanical force and the force from the air pressure, the valve remains closed. For a check valve, the cracking pressure is the air or fluid pressure needed to open the valve when the air or fluid is moving in the correct direction through the valve. If we start to force air through the valve, the pressure on the left side of the valve goes up and cracks open, the valve causing air to flow. After we have moved some of the air from the left side to the right side, there is less air on the left side than there used to be. This drops the pressure on the left side. This makes it more difficult to open the valve on the next pumping cycle. However, by using a series of check valves and multiple stages of pumping, we can reduce the pressure on the right side and make it easier to open the valve. In addition, with less air on the left side, it becomes more and more difficult to create a force large enough to open the check valve even if we can reduce the pressure on the right side. A single stage syringe vacuum pump is shown in this simple animation. All the pump requires is two one-way or check valves, a syringe, and the tubes and fittings to move the air or fluid. Our goal is to evacuate a chamber of its air. On the left, we see a tube coming from the vacuum chamber. As one pulls the piston, the air in the tube is forced to move. As long as the pressure on the incoming check valve on the left exceeds the cracking pressure, the valve opens and air flows into the piston. As the piston is then pushed back to its starting position, Air pressure causes the outgoing check valve to open and let the air from the chamber escape to the atmosphere. However, as we discussed earlier, the difference in pressure inside the syringe chamber and the atmospheric pressure creates a pressure gradient on the outgoing check valve on the right, making it harder and harder to open the valve as the pressure drops in the system. We solve this problem by using multiple stages of syringe pumps. We see a two-stage syringe vacuum pump. In this system, the pump on the right is used to create a low pressure chamber for the system on the left, into which low pressure air can be pumped. For this project, I used both 1 quarter inch and 3 8 inch systems. I found that the 1 quarter inch check valves were more reliable than the 3 8 inch counterparts. We use 1 quarter inch male NPT threaded fittings with a barb to connect to the tubing. It is easy to convert between 3 8 to 1 quarter inch systems using tube adapters. All the fittings, check valves, and vacuum gauge I purchased from Amazon. I purchased several 60 milliliter syringes from the local pharmacy. In building your system, it is important to point the check valves in the correct direction. For these check valves, the air flows from the white to the black side and not in reverse. Also, as a note, the 60 milliliter syringes only work with one quarter inch tubing. We created a single stage, two stage, and four stage system. With a single stage system, it is possible to get to 26 inches mercury, but additional pumping does not improve the vacuum pressure. Now using a two stage system, we repeat the process for a single pump on the right. You can see that we once again get to about 26 inches mercury and no better. But then using the pump on the left, we can improve the vacuum pressure pretty significantly. However, doing these processes in reverse does not improve the pressure. Using the two-stage system, we were able to improve the pressure to about 27.5 inches mercury, and with four stages, we can improve it to a little over 28 inches mercury, with the best measured pressure being about 28.5 inches mercury. This is still below the ideal pressure of the check valve, but demonstrates the value of multiple stages of pumping.